The Miami Marlins announced that on the day after exiting his outing early on Wednesday due to discomfort from his broken nail on his right middle finger, right-handed pitcher Yuri Perez experienced elbow soreness on Thursday and alerted our training team. The evaluation process immediately began with imaging and testing, which will continue over the next few days. Oh, boy. Announcement from the Marlins regarding Yuri Perez. Tons to get into. This does not sound good. What does it mean for Yuri? What does it mean for the Marlins? Tons to get into. This is Locked On Marlins. You are Locked On Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings from England and welcome to Locked On Marlins. It's your daily Marlins podcast. I'm your host, Peter Pratt. Hit me up, of course, at Miami Marlins underscore UK. Happy Sunday, guys. It is the 17th of March and it is a Sunday. It is bright and early here in the UK. No emergency pod last night when the news dropped. It was tied up, tied up. But I'm available this morning. Wanted to hit what is effectively an emergency podcast with the news that the Marlins shared and put out there that I just read on the intro of this show. Uh, the the bad news, it seems, around Yuri Perez and the worrying news, maybe, let's say. Nevertheless, thanks for making Locked On Marlins your first listen of the day, guys. This is your team every day. Hit subscribe wherever you get your pods. Leave a review, of course. Don't forget there is a YouTube channel as well. If you are watching on the YouTube, hello and greetings. Good morning to you. You'll see the rundown and, well, in, in caps, is elbow soreness. It's going to be the main topic of conversation. The other thing that stands out to me is that Peter Bendix has experience in dealing with situations just like this. And the situation I'm talking about is where effectively your starting rotation evaporates right before your very eyes, right at the start of a season, but was still able to mitigate all of that and put a successful product on the field with the Tampa Bay Rays. So all is not lost. Peter Bendix has experience dealing with these issues. So when I talk about that, at the second part, we don't know the situation with Yuri Perez. Um, and things will, I guess, emerge more over the coming days. So, as I've already shared and already read out, this was a, uh, a you know a Marlins comms, Marlins PR announcement uh, that came out. That's all the announcement read. Um, for me, that's it's it's a bad sign that you know it isn't simply you know a tweet out that Yuri Perez is, is, you know, dealing with some elbow soreness, like the formality around this type of announcement and what the next stages seem to be, which are effectively going to visit Sandy Alcantara's surgeon. Uh, to me, these are really, really bad indicators that something with Yuri Perez is, is, is not good. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're likely like gut feel at this point, my gut feel on Sunday, the 17th of March in the morning of, Got feel is we're heading to a situation here where um, potentially there's a Tommy John requirement here for Yuri Perez as well, uh, which would be devastating news for Yuri Perez, devastating news for the Marlins, clearly devastating news for all of us, the fans, because boy oh boy, Yuri was was electric at the back end of 2023. I did think it was a very interesting tweet as well that Alex Ferrer put up, which I thought was really, you know. It kind of, it was a conversation and a topic of conversation that was had last year where the Marlins were trying to manage innings for Yuri Perez. He ended up not being available at the back end of the season into the postseason, saying he's reached his innings limit, et cetera, et cetera. They're trying to manage the situation, um, you know, for the good of the player, seemingly. He then has a full off season. He then comes back, throws a couple of, you know, he, he's barely thrown, to be honest with you, because he's had this finger issue that's been like nagging him. and. There you go. It looks like this could be, you know, missing the entire season. The point Alex Ferrer make, was making was, listen, whatever you do with pitchers at this point, it, it's kind of irrelevant. They're going to get hurt when they get hurt. You can't actually really predict it, which I think is is a fair point. I think it is fair. I know there's elements of trying to de-risk it, but everything with Yuri Perez at this point, there's no reason why you would assume that this would happen. So good point. Well made. Many 
may disagree, but I, I, I can, I can get that too. And the Marlins made the decision they made last year. They, you know, were managing innings. It may be that we then get into this year, and it didn't matter. The, the management of innings maybe wasn't aggressive enough. Did the Marlins pitch Yuri Perez too much? Did he throw too many innings? Like, I know they, they, you know, they brought him up. They shut him down. He built back up. He came back. They shut him down. Like, overall, was that methodology the wrong one? Are the two connected? Is this connected at all? This elbow issue, potentially, that may require Tommy John. We'll wait and see. This is pure speculation on my point. Um, the Marlins have not mentioned anything to do with Tommy John, by the way. This is all speculation uh, from me. I think the other thing to call out here is, like, this finger issue that's been lingering with Yuri Perez for multiple starts now. It wasn't like he exited the game on Wednesday. It wasn't like that was the first time. This has been uh, basically happening throughout the entirety of spring. He's got to a point now where he's got, you know, some sort of acrylic nail situation. Me and Sean talked about it uh, earlier this week. So there's there's an issue there. And I do wonder if that issue is then led to, you know, you have something wrong with your finger or your fingernail. Thus, you maybe start throwing the ball slightly differently. It puts added stress into areas where it's not used to being stressed. Those kind of things. Is this all connected? Is it not? I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. I don't know. What we're seeing across baseball is just like, this is an epidemic now with pitchers. And the Marlins have seen that directly. But like this situation with pitchers is, is getting out of hand, to be honest with you. A lot of people talking about the pitch clock. Is that to blame? What's to blame? Like, what is to blame? What's the root cause of this? I mean, Tommy John and these surgeries and these injuries have, have been a part of pitching. It's just, you know, it's an unnatural motion for the body and it's a lot of stress. You get it. I must say, since the sticky stuff situation has changed recently, it feels like, to me anyway, that things have accelerated. I haven't dug into that in any kind of real depth, but it feels like there's a correlation there with the pitchers having to... And I feel like at the time, maybe like this was something that, you know, Maybe when Trevor Bauer was a little bit more, you know, people were, were happy to listen to Bauer. But I feel like Bauer was one of the ones that was out there kind of demystifying a lot of the myths here around sticky stuff and rosin and all this stuff that was going on. And I feel like one of the main feedbacks that the heat shed was, I'm expecting pitcher injuries to go way up with this, you know, this kind of crackdown on, on, on sticky stuff and illegal substances or whatever you want to call it. It's going to mean that the pitchers have to try to do more to deliver the same results. And that extra, again, that extra stress is going to lead to more injuries. The, the spike was expected. The pitch clock definitely, you know, I think is a factor. I think they're all, it's all a factor. Rob Manfred, really, the, some of these decisions, there's a byproduct here where injuries are skyrocketing for pitchers. And for me, this is something that Major League Baseball like needs to address like, urgently, urgently, because you know if if you've got to a situation where you run out of arms, every club runs out of arms. The product on the field um, isn't isn't going to be as good. Clearly, we've got so many stud dudes down now at this point, more than I can ever remember at any one moment. Like it feels kind of crazy to be honest with you. So. What can change? What can change? I don't know. Is it is it the player's responsibility? I know we're talking about the rules, but is it player's responsibility? Are they trying to do too much? Is it the clubs? Who's responsible here for this situation in Major League Baseball where the, the regularity of guys getting hurt in a way which keeps them out for 12 to 18 months is just, it seems too great. It feels like Tommy John and these injuries are just like, they're expected. You know, half your rotation probably year on year is expected to have Tommy John. Like, that isn't sustainable. It shouldn't be sustainable. So something needs to change in that area. Something really does. And I'm intrigued to see, like, do, do they make changes? Do they, and equally, do they make the changes, like, on the, on the down low? You know, a bit like with these juiced balls where, you know, they're trying to inject a bit of offense into the game and some home runs and people want to see stuff. Like, it kind of, like, snuck on, like, be, Major League Baseball being sneaky about it, um, not really letting the general population know. I'm interested to see, like, will some of these changes, particularly around the substances, will that maybe relax a little bit, um, but unbeknown to everyone? So it just kind of like it's it's known. If you know, you know type of vibes. 
I don't know. We'll see. Nevertheless, that message, that email I received from Marlin's you know, PR team, simply stating the paragraph that I read out to start the show. I haven't seen that from Marlin's PR for any other injury. Just put it like, I get all the emails about all the roster moves, everything. And I haven't seen an email like that before, I don't think. And it's the first type of email I've had like that. So that to me says this is serious. This is serious. And considering that Yuri Perez is visiting Sandy's surgeon, again, another indicator this is very serious at this point. And it's, for me, gut feel Yuri Perez is going to be missing for the entire season. Huge blow for Yuri. Huge blow for the Marlins. Huge blow for us as fans. I'm going to talk about how this can be handled. Peter Bendix was on the broadcast yesterday. I'm going to talk about the broadcast. The Bally guys back, back together. The old crew back. Paul Severino in there. Rod Allen doing his thing. Rod Allen from the bench. It was amazing. I love that, by the way. Um, I, I propose that moving forward. It's like, let's get, let's get the, the color guy. You know, uh, let's get him on the bench at all moments. Or her. There's no reason. It could be anyone. But let's get them on the bench right in the, in the thick of the action. And, you know, get, get those insights. It was great to see. Nevertheless, we're going to talk about this because Bendix was on the, the broadcast, which was good to hear from him. Uh, I tweeted something out regarding, I mean, Rod Allen. I tip my cap to him around uh, the questioning that, that he put forward regarding one particular offensive dude. So we're going to talk about that shortly. Uh, before we do that, a couple of ads to roll into here. And the first one is our good friends over at Robin Hood. Yes, sir. So did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA. With a 3% match, the offer is good through April 30. Get started at robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. And this episode is also, also brought to you by our good friends, of course, over at FanDuel. Yes, sir. And say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, listen up. New customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, you can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit fanjuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Right, guys, back here with me, Peter Pratt, on Sunday, the 17th of March, an emergency podcast linked to Yuri Perez experiencing elbow soreness. Further tests ongoing. Off to visit Sandy's surgeon. Doesn't sound good. All indicators are pointing to Yuri Perez having a serious injury. And for the Marlins, this is a serious problem. This is on, on the backdrop of already dealing with Sandy Alcantara missing for 2024. We already know that situation. We've already mentally dealt with it, have we? I don't know. Nevertheless, to lose your ace is tough. Um, to lose potentially your second. I mean, how many aces have the Marlins got? I mean, they got more aces than, than than the MGM Grand at this point. I don't know. But, you know, to lose Yuri Perez would be a huge blow. But in advance of that, we've already seen Braxton Garrett has basically not been able to participate in spring thus far due to shoulder issues. Eddie Cabrera couldn't even get a pitch in to start his last outing. Um, you know, Yuri Perez exited after what? One out, it was a couple of batters he faced, but one out effectively. So, man, oh, man, it has just been a carousel of, of, of pain here for the Marlins. Um, you know, luckily, a couple of guys, you know, luck, I say luckily, maybe this was calculated. I don't know, but 
We think about AJ Puck specifically, where the Marlins made that decision early on was to stretch him out as a starter. It seems right now it's working in the Puck's shown the stuff to be effective as a starter. Clearly, at any point, things can go wrong on the health front. Puck has got no track record whatsoever of length in terms of innings and body of work. He's got no track record of that. He, he hasn't even pitched a major league game as a starter. He's never started a game in the big leagues, AJ Puck, although he was drafted, developed as a starter. Never, never. The, the A's tried to get him back into the rotation and were planning that last season before the Marlins traded for him. The Marlins then needed him in the pen. They then transitioned him to a starter. By hook or by crook, the Marlins have kind of got that one right with AJ Puck. They've got it right to a point where it's clear that he can be effective as a starter. It's clear that there's some question marks over the body of work he can deliver. Ryan Weathers as well has definitely taken a step forward, I would say, from when he was acquired. That's going to continue to evolve. His last start wasn't as effective as the rest. Still, he's been really effective compared to maybe what we saw at the back end of last year. So Weathers has stepped up. Puck stepped up. Trevor Rogers has returned, albeit his last outing, there was definitely some velo dip on Rogers too on his fastball. Like he was ticking around 90 miles per hour at some point. So don't believe it was, you know, he wasn't reporting any issues. And said, actually, it was just, you know, he was trying some things out, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe this is the first sign of it. You know, I talked about it in the first first part, first segment here is like, who, how do pitchers adjust? Like, what what does the future look like for a, a major league starter at this point, considering the the situation we're all facing into where everyone's being asked to throw super hard with super amounts of spin and it's leading to the same outcome? Is this, you know... Is this the start of it where Trevor, for example, starts to dial it back a bit? Is that what the future looks like here from a from a, a major league starter? Is it going to be more like mid-90s and below? Like, is that going to become the norm to protect yourself, to keep yourself healthy on the field? Can you still get out doing that? We, that we've already seen <laughs> Theo piling in, letting me know someone's at the door. Good on him. Um, I don't know who's at the door, by the way. Might be Peter Bendix for all we know. Um, you know, we've seen with Braxton Garrett that with you know with him, it's not a high velocity piece. He's able to get outs. Can Trevor Rogers get outs? I think he can. I think he can. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything in that, but definitely he dialed it back. Is that going to be the trend we're going to work with moving forward? It's going to be really interesting to see because something has to change. You can't just go out there full gas, full velo, full spin, and expect to stay healthy year on year. We're looking around the league. It's impossible. It's impossible. The other thing as well, the Marlins have already talked about George Soriano stretching him out. They've already talked about Brian Hoeing stretching him out. They've already talked about Max Meyer. And we've got this bonus of Sixto Sanchez that, you know, is is throwing velocity um, way back up where we didn't expect to see it again. Like, what does the future look like for, for Sixto Sanchez? I don't know. Should it be as a starter? Probably not. At this point, like this year anyway, it needs to be built back up like ultra carefully. I feel like you need to be super careful with Sixto. But man, at this point, like we're getting to a stage where, you know, the Marlins are going to need, you know, Sixto to be, you know, a three inning guy. And that's where things I think get interesting for the Marlins in general here, because they've done the same with Puck, Hoeing, Soriano, Max Meyer. I think they've worked him back up. But Sixto, like all these guys in that bucket are effectively relievers or long men or swing men or however you want to frame it. Like, Peter Bendix, like, this is why I'm not panicking, by the way. I'm not panicking about this situation for the Marlins. That, Like I said, their rotation, you know, through spring, it's evaporated. Yuri, Brax, Eddie, like, these guys, the rotation is just you know, already with Sandy. So the rotation's evaporating. Peter Bendix won't panic. He won't panic because he's seen it before. He's done it before. It was the same with the Rays last season. Glasnow was down. Rasmussen was down. Springs was down. There was one other I'm forgetting. But, like, the Rays had the same problem where they lost a ton of their rotation and they made it work. The Rays made it work. And Peter Bendix will still feel confident that they can make this work. 
there's enough pitching talent in the organization. They may not look like prototypical starters. The Marlins may not go with prototypical starters right now. I was already interested to see if they went down that pathway anyway. For me, this seems to be, you know, this is going to be the norm. Like the Marlins are definitely going to have to pivot away from running the same dudes out there for six innings a go. Like this is going to be a lot of two, three innings here, there, and everywhere. Everyone chipping in, long relievers doing their thing. This is going to look so different, but this is what the Marlins are going to have to do. They're going to have to do this to deal with it because they've run out of guys that can throw 160 innings, 180 innings consistently. They've run out of those guys, seemingly. Maybe those guys don't even exist anymore. I don't know. But Peter Bendix will not panic. He will not panic. And there's plenty of guys in the Marlins organization that are capable pitchers. You know, I look at like Pat Monteverde, for example, really good example where, you know, he's, he's, I think he's been option now at this point. He's not, you know, he's not with the, you know, the main group or main camp, but he, there's a guy that has worked hard. He's kind of similar to Troy Johnson in some way where like kind of worked hard, looks like he can, you know, he might be able to cut it at the big league level, wait and see, but his chance is just there. It's waiting. He's just lurking. And it's the type of guy that you're going to, you're going to maybe need to lean on Max Meyer as well. Like the need for Max, again, it goes back to Alex Ferrer's point. Like it's, it's funny, right? Like Max Meyer, he's had Tommy John. It's repaired. He's back now. Like how much babying do you, do you, you know, do you wrap around? Like how much babying does Max Meyer get considering he's had Tommy John? He's worked his way back. You know, if you manage his innings, is it actually going to do anything? Is it going to impact things? You know, in some ways it could and should, but. These injuries can clearly happen at any point. So you'll wait to see. Skip Schumacher was speaking about Max Meyer, I believe, with Kyle Selaf, um and Stephen Strom, which was a good conversation. I think Stephen Strom asked about Max Meyer specifically, and uh, Skip gave a great answer uh, around that one. And it was, you know, he's coming back. Um, he's healthy, so that's good. But equally, you know, he's working on developing that third pitch. Like the way Skip described it was the slider can get out but he needs more consistently. And considering the innings limit at this point and considering the need for development for Max Meyer, like reading between the lines, I don't think Skip Schumacher believes that Max Meyer is like big league ready at this point as a starter. I, I, I think he still believes there's progression and development required. If, all, if everyone was healthy and all was equal, Max Meyer at this point spends some time in the minor leagues developing that that third pitch, that fourth pitch, whatever it might be, because that's going to be critical for his future success. The change now is the Marlins may need him and he may need to come and play a role. And that role might be a three-inning guy, a 60 pitch, just go a lot, you know, go as far as you can in 60 and we'll see where we go from there. That might be the need for Max Meyer. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they pivot away from this and you know what the the impact would be. You know, the other option clearly is that they they think, okay, the injuries are piling up, particularly if Yuri Perez has gone for 24. And so Sandy. You then think, okay, like, what are there any other free agents available that maybe could come in and plug a gap at this point? They've obviously got Smelter, they've got Chirinos, they've got a few guys that are, are already, you know, minor league contracts that will probably be needed. But the question then comes is like, is there any other guys out there like uh, Michael Lorenzen, for example, or the guy who, you know, a lot of people don't want to talk about, but Trevor Bauer, who's saying, listen, I'll come and play league minimum money. Um, you know, these guys, one thing for sure with Trevor Bauer is, like, he can throw up some innings. He can absolutely eat some innings. And so, you know, we'll see how that goes. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about Bauer. It's obviously a polarizing guy. Um, you know, for me, I've, I've been comfortable personally with the Marlins going down that pathway. Others aren't. It's fair enough. It is what it is. The Marlins have a need now. They <laughs> they have a need, and I'm wondering if Trevor Bauer would solve that need. We'll wait to see. Um, it's a fine balance, this roster. It really is. It's definitely a fine balance. So I'm going to talk about that shortly, where in this year in particular, where you've got a few guys that are either on expiring deals or maybe have two or less years of control remaining. If Sandy's down, Yuri's down, and maybe a few other guys down, next thing is the Marlins get off to a slow start and they run out of pitching. Then 
What's that going to mean for this season? What's it going to mean for the way the rosters manage? What's it going to mean for the way the Marlins approach, you know, the future deadline, for example? I think it's a really interesting topic and, and one that can go either way, to be honest with you. So we're going to talk about that shortly. But before we do that, this episode is brought to you by good friends over at Amazon Fire TV. And Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. And Fire TV has recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis highlights and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and of course, those cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV. Uh, Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, simply go to amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. All right, guys, final segment here on an emergency podcast. Yuri Perez dealing with elbow soreness. Bad news. Feels like bad news is coming. Let's see how it plays out in the next few days. Let's see what's announced. But the way the Marlins have announced this specifically and what the next steps look to be, I, for one, panicking about Yuri Perez's availability for 2024. Peter Bendix has been in this situation before. He was in it last year with the Rays, and they ended up having a successful season. So all is not lost. Peter Bendix will not panic. He will know what to do if, indeed, the Marlins lose Yuri Perez off the back of Sandy Alcantara being lost, off the back of... And listen, it's going to be a long season. There's going to be other guys that are going to be lost. You know, they're going to go down hurt, lost. I mean, lost is probably the wrong way of phrasing it. But, you know, there's going to be guys that are going to be hurt for sustained periods. The pitching depth is going to be tested. But I feel like even now with these guys already hurt down, there's still plenty of interesting pitching options the Marlins have. How they manage them is going to be very interesting. Are we going to see more of these kind of piggyback situations, three innings, three innings, trying to get through the six using two guys. You could do. Open or starting it all. I don't know. It's going to be loads of creative stuff, I think, anyway. The final topic here, though, really is about this roster specifically, where if the Marlins do run out of pit, like this Marlins team, we've seen it in spring. We know what this team is. We saw it last year. This team is not built on its offensive prowess. They're not going to blow other teams away. This team is built on... Pitching, defense, and leverage bullpen working well last year. And a bit of kind of, you know, a bit of late voodoo and a paper cut inning here and there last year. Like, you know, a lot of contact hitters, they can get it rolling at any moment. But this team fundamentally is built on pitching first and offense second. In spring, that's what it looks like. The Marlins offense is, is terrible by all of the numbers and all the metrics. It was terrible last year and it was terrible the spring before. This is just what the Marlins are. The point I'm making here is, if the pitching fully disintegrates at this point, for whatever reason, and they run out of arms, and next thing is they aren't they don't have the ability to control the other club's offenses, the Marlins end up in a bit of a tailspin. What does that mean here for the Marlins specifically? I This roster in general, I think, is on a real fine balance, specifically with a couple of guys, specifically with like a Tanner Scott, specifically with a Luis Arias, specifically with a Jesus Lozado. Like these guys that are progressed into ARB, the business model suggests they have to be moved and, and replenish the farm, get the next wave of talent coming. Josh Bell, again, is another guy, like obviously expiring deal. All of these guys are like, you know, if, if things go sideways for the fish, then they will be moved. That They, they have to be moved. And so this is going to be the interesting part of this season. Can the Marlins find a way to manage these pitching issues? They've got tons of them heading into the season, and there'll be more of them as the season evolves. Can Peter Bendix solve the riddle here? Can he find creative ways to solve these problems? I trust no one more than Peter Bendix to be able to solve that specific problem. He's seen it before. 
However, if things go sideways with this season, and we know it pretty early, the business model will mean that Tanner Scott, Josh Bell absolutely will be moved, you know, sooner rather than later, let's say. They'll also consider what the future looks like for Luis Arias and Jesus Lozado. They'll be thinking that anyway, irrespective of performance. But this roster is on such a fine balance that, you know, these, what's to say the Marlins don't pull the trigger on something like right now? Like I mentioned, the Yankees could be in the hunt for someone. All of a sudden, the Marlins may think, listen, without Sandy, without Yuri, without the pitch in depth, should we cash in on Jesus Lozado now? Like they look to do with the Orioles earlier this offseason. Should they look to do that now? Is it the right time? You know, and effectively punt 2024. Could the Marlins end up punting 2024? Because the pitching and Sandy situation, Yuri situation, leaves them exposed to be able to actually deliver meaningful success here. So these are a lot of questions. A lot of questions, a lot of considerations for Peter Bendix. You know, it's his first year in, into this role. He's built an amazing, seemingly, an amazing front office around him. The organization has taken a very different approach. However, the backdrop of this is Kim Ang left the organization following a postseason berth. There's pressure on Peter Bendix. Like, there's no just like gimme situations. There's no like, oh, well, I'll give him a couple of years. This club, fundamentally, this roster is still the same as last year. And it made the postseason as the five seed. For me, there is absolutely no grace period for Peter Bendix just to like come in and this ends up being a 60 win club again. Like the pressure will be on. Pressure will be on. And pressure is a privilege, as they say. And it is a privilege for Peter Bendix. And I trust him. I trust him to deal with this specific challenge. Going to leave it there, guys. Overall, this has been a tough podcast to deliver, an emergency pod. Marlins Twitter was ablaze last night. Rightly so. It sounds bad. We wait for, and we we pray for positive news here with Yuri Perez, but my gut feel says this is going to be um, something that keeps him out for a prolonged period. The rotation's already dinged up with this news for Yuri Perez. Could the Marlins punt 2024 and maybe look to accelerate their future development? They could do. However, if Peter Bendix doesn't want to go down that path and actually thinks we can make this work, then I trust him over anyone to make this work considering the experiences he's had with the Tampa Bay Rays. Thanks for making Locked On Marlins your first listen, guys. Happy Sunday. Be back tomorrow, likely, with the UK GOAT, Sean Barrett. We'll see you then.